Howdy gang and welcome back to Pool School. Today's episode is the third installment of my series on salt systems and salt pools. And in this particular episode, I'm gonna teach you how to test the salinity or salt levels of your pool. So if you have a salt pool, you're gonna to wanna to watch this one. Okay, so you have a salt pool and you know how to clean the cell now, you know how the salt systems work if you've watched my previous two lessons on salt systems. And again, in this one as promised, I'm gonna teach you how to test the salinity, which is the salt level of your pool water for your salt cell and salt system. Um, just one quick note, there are basically four ways to test the salinity of your pool water and one of those, I'm only gonna go over three because the fourth one, which is basically specific test strips that allow you to test the salinity levels. I just don't use them. I think they're pretty worthless. They're very hard to use. They're, they're confusing. Uh, for me, because I wear reading glasses, the print on them usually is so small that I can't even read it. And by the time I make out what I'm reading, um, it's too much time has gone by and so I don't get an accurate reading. So I'm not going to discuss what I believe to be very worthless test strips for salinity all right not not test strips for chemistry like the ones that I use with the aqua check and all that I'm talking about specific ones for salinity so I'm not going to discuss those I'm going to discuss the other three and give you an example of each and then you should be set to go a quick note regarding salinity levels the way it's measured is in what they call parts per million or P PM. Now, now I'm not exactly sure what parts per million mean. I guess it's how many parts of salt per million. I don't know what the million part is, but you don't really need to know that. All you need to know that it is measured in parts per million or PPM. And so if your pool salt system says that the ideal range is 2,700 to 3,400 parts per million, you want to make sure that your salinity levels stay in that range. You don't really need to know all the details on what parts per million in, you don't have to have a chemistry degree and all that. And if you do have any questions about that, don't ask me because I really don't know. People ask me how often should you test the salinity? Well, for me, I probably test the salinity of my clients pools about once every four months. Um, especially during the swim season. I'll, I'll test it at the beginning of the swim season and then I'll test it kind of halfway through the sim, swim season. And in Arizona, the swim season starts at about March, believe it or not, and then it goes on through probably the end of September, middle of October. So I usually test it at the beginning of that season and somewhere in the middle of it or somewhere towards August just to make sure everything's going, just as we hit August, just to make sure the levels are still okay. And again, uh, that's me. You probably can get away with testing your salt, the salinity in your pool about every six months. So that's a general guideline. Uh, if you're having trouble with your system, you might wanna test it more often, but uh, I'll explain more about that as we go into the first way to test your salinity. Alrighty, so I'm at one of my client's houses and probably the first and arguably the easiest, but not necessarily the most accurate way to test the salinity of your salt system or your salt pool is to use the built-in sensor and the control panel itself. Most current systems uh, for salt pools have a built-in sensor that gives you a reading um, and it's a fairly accurate providing everything's functioning right and again uh, there can be some inaccuracies if the sensor goes bad which does happen or if your cell is really dirty that can that can alter your your readout so but for at a glance it's not too bad so I'm gonna go over how that works I'm back here at my clients house and you notice I have the equipment running and that's super important you have to make sure that the salt system, which is there, runs the same time that your pool equipment runs. Because remember, salt cells need the salt water to be flowing through them in order for them to convert. So if you've got the salt cell on and the system and the filter's not running, there's no water flowing through it, it's not going to convert anything because there's no water flowing through it. Okay. So again, this is just for example purposes only. I'm not endorsing this product. This is the Hayward Goldline Aquarite Salt Chlorine Generator. You can see it right there, okay? And there's a little readout thing right there, and we'll get into that in a moment. But if you go here first, 
you're going to look into the the um, schematics. Now this is really good. So this gives you a little idea of you know different LED indicators. So you're going to want to refer to that, but we're not going to go into that today. But what you want to look at down here in the recommended pool chemistry, see that right there? You want to go down to salt. And if you look at the salt, and you go up to there, see it says ideal range, right at the bottom of the salt, it says the ideal range is 2700 to 3700 parts per million, okay? And it even tells you to test it monthly, right? So that gives me an idea of what I'm looking at as far as um, the, the levels for ideal levels for this product. Now, if you notice, I come over here and I go to the control panel and I look right there and it is telling me how many parts per million it's showing. Now, that's pretty low, 1,400 parts per million, but I go, oh wow, that's not good. Should I add salt? Well, just in this case, I want you to look at something. See the power light is on? You notice the generating light is not on. You notice it says check salt and inspect cell. What that is telling me, that I probably need to clean the cell before I go adding salt. Because again, like I said earlier, if your cell is dirty, then your salt levels are going to read different on the built-in sensor because that affects it, okay? So I will clean this, I'm not gonna do it today, but just so you know, that's how you basically read the built-in sensor. And again, because it's not giving me a super accurate reading because it says inspect cell and check salt, and it's not generating, that means chances are, and I know this from experience, that the cell is probably dirty. So, I'm gonna to go to my second method, which is by far my favorite. Okay, so, remember I'm still at the same pool, and the issue was that I didn't get a really accurate reading with the built-in sensor, probably because the cell's dirty, and I'm gonna clean that uh, next week. Um, for right now, I don't need to worry about it because the swim season's over, and so I just put a little chlorine in there and it's okay. But um, I wanna show you what my go-to and most favorite way of testing salinity in a pool is, and that is to use an electronic salinity tester. Now, I don't remember the brand of this one, but I'll show it to you and let you see it, okay? Uh, it's waterproof. Uh, I got it as a gift from a guy I used to work for and he gave it to me when I told him I was actually going to be going on my own and he sent me away with his blessings and this is a gift and wished me all the best and it's been one of the best tools I've ever had when it comes to dealing with salt pools. It's pretty accurate as long as you maintain it and keep it clean and keep it calibrated and whatever one you get. Uh, your instruction manual will tell you how to calibrate it and how to maintain it and all that So please don't email me questions about specific units even if it's this one Just know that it does have to be calibrated occasionally I do it about every month to three months to make sure that it gives me an accurate reading this one when I did check it out several years ago online I think it ran between 90 and 120 dollars So um, that's a good range to consider when it comes to getting an electric salinity tester for pool water and again just do a Google search and you can find a whole bunch of them I wouldn't spend a ton of money on them though there's some that are like $500 or $400 $300 that's way too much you don't need quite as heavy-duty one as that so I'm going to show you how this works and it's pretty simple just remember that it's a little tricky because of the readout but remember we're looking at parts per million okay okay so I'm hoping you guys can see me so I'm gonna take my tester and I'm gonna take the cap off. And this one, this one has a little cap and that's what I'm gonna put the water in. I've made sure it's cleaned out. So I washed it out and rinsed it out. And I've, then I'm gonna just dip it in the water and fill it with pool water. Then it's got an on button. So I turn this, this, this thing on. And if you notice, it goes through this process. And if you look at it carefully, I don't know if you can see the numbers. It's got zero point zero zero can you see that zero point zero zero that's pretty hard because we're dealing with basically thousands like 2500 to whatever and uh, parts per million so how do I read that well it's not too hard I'll show you okay so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna dip the electrodes which is this end right here into my cup of water and it's starting to jump up it's going up, it's going 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 
So it's showing me 0 0.5. So according to this, I am probably at about 500 parts per million. So that's actually pretty low. So it might be that this, this pool actually does need more salt. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'll probably clean the cell next week and double check and see what kind of reading I get. So again, when I dipped it in, I got a reading of about 0 0.50. And again, that's telling me there's probably about, um, oopsie, that's probably about 500 parts per million. And that's because I know how to read this. So um, that's pretty much how you use your electronic tester. And again, different testers are going to be a little bit different depending on how they work. But I do think they are the most accurate things to have. So if you can get one for $100, then I would suggest doing so. But remember, there is a third way. In case you get kind of readings and you're like, you're not sure, we're going to talk about the third way. Okay, haven't moved a bit. The third way, very simple. Take a sample of your pool water in a plastic, non-leaching like Tupperware cup, a small cup, and make sure it has a lid on it, and immediately take it down to a local pool supply store and have them test the salinity of your pool. Tell them you don't need anything else, you just wanna know the salinity of your pool. And while you're there, let's say your salinity levels do come out low, okay? If they come out low, then you can tell them, hey, I have a however many thousand gallon pool that you have, how many bags of pool salt would it take to raise it to the optimum levels or ideal levels, and then you can give them those levels based on what your pool specifications said back there at your control panel. So that way they can give you however many bags you need, you can get them right there. And then I would suggest again, add them one at a time. Um, chances are, if you're staying on it, you're gonna only need to add like one every once in a while, um, but stranger things have been known to happen. But when you add the salt, just know that it kind of settles in the bottom. Run the equipment so that it gives a chance for the water to stir up and dissolve the salt and distribute it throughout the entire pool water system. So that's pretty much the third way. That third way is good in the sense that it can kind of give you, again, uh, one of three choices. You have the system sensor, you have your electronic sensor, and then you have the pool supply company. And between those three, you'll get an accurate reading and you'll be able to know, oh, my sensor in my pool system is off because the other two gave me a much different reading. Now again, they could be off within one to 200 parts per million, even when they're all working perfectly. That's not a big deal, but if they're off by 500 parts per million or 1,000 parts per million, then you're probably looking at um, something's probably not right with that particular one that gives you the different reading. So again, those three methods can give you a checks and balances to help you accurately determine the salt levels of your pool and then you adjust them as you need. Once again, remember that when it comes to adding salt to your pool, less is more. Don't dump a bunch of bags in there because if you oversalt your pool, then what happens is it, it can gum up the fins of your salt cell way quicker than you'd want them to. And um, then you have to clean them so much more. So again, just add one bag at a time. And the other way, the other thing is, if you have too much salt in your pool, then there's a problem. The only way to really get that out of there is either just deal with it and let your pool system uh, through evaporation deal with it that way or you have to drain out some of your water and refill it with fresh water and then kind of retest it and get it adjusted again. So better to use one bag at a time, let it run for a day, then test your salinity again the next day, see what it's at and add it that way. That way you get it to where you want it without getting it way beyond where you want it, which is not a good thing. So once again, there you have it folks, episode three of a series on salt systems, how to test the salinity of your pool. I hope it helped. Again, if you have any questions that pertain to this, please feel free to share them at the bottom of this, uh, the description of this, of this video, or you can email me, and here it comes again, kennypoolschool at gmail.com, again, Kenny poolschool at gmail.com. We are one day before Halloween in October and things have cooled down so people probably aren't swimming anymore. But again, because you have a pool, it is still important to be safe. So have fun, be safe, and always, always, always watch your kids around water. I'll see you next time. <coughs>